Well, my shoe got canceled and it's cool. Sucks for me, good for you. Cause today we're gonna to talk about recording media with the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K and why everybody is using this, these Samsung T5s, which are great. They're perfect, they're great size, but I like using this. A standard solid state four and a half inch drive. And we're going to talk about why and how. Stay tuned. What's going on guys? If this is your first time to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. And if you like the video at the end, you can hit the thumbs up, but we're gonna get straight into it. Everybody loves to use the Samsung T5 when recording two Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras, and I can see why. They're small, they're fast, and they're a lot cheaper than other recording methods or media, and that's cool. But I like recording with solid state drives, and I'm gonna tell you how I got to that. I used to own a Blackmagic production 4K camera, so I bought a bunch of 500 gigabytes, 250 gigabyte cards. And when I moved to FS5, I also purchased a Atomist recorder and I use these bad boys too. So I've been keeping them around for a while. This is not a new one. This is a, I don't even want to say an older one. It's not the best one. However, it's still super fast. And I found a way to use these with my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. You're probably wondering why, why not just use this? Because this gives me a cartridge approach. I can slap in a terabyte, yank it out, slap in another terabyte, keep filming. With this, I have to purchase multiple ones. One terabyte of solid state is half the price of one terabyte on a T5. It gives me the ability to pop one of these in, record it, when I'm done, I can go to the next one. Also, when I get home, I have a hard drive reader that is just a standalone and I can just pop this in, pops up on my computer. I can start editing right on that drive or pull data to my master drive if needed. Now, you're probably thinking, well, what about the speed? Both speeds are very similar. There is a asterisk to that. There is something that you need to make sure that the speed on this is equivalent to the speed on this. Most solid state drives that are fairly decent can record or write at around 450 to 480 uh, megabytes per second. I will say this for those who are asking before you even ask it. I can record in the highest quality on my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera. That's a consistent data rate, 4K60, without a problem. No drop frames, no issues. What you need to do initially is you need to have a solid state reader that will connect to a USB-C port. And I have one that I use and it's a generation Two, the first time I went with a generation one testing it out and I was wondering why I couldn't record at the maximum quality. It was because I didn't have a generation two to take full advantage of the speed on these solid states. So I went with a solid state drive enclosure by a company called Ugreen. It's a 3.1 USB uh, C connector and it's a generation two SATA connector. It supposedly supports speeds up to six gigabytes per second, probably not real world. However, for 15 bucks delivered, you can't go wrong with it. In fact, you probably be able to record to a standard hard drive, a standard laptop hard drive. I haven't tested it, but I'm pretty sure you can probably record, you know, some 12 to one, 10 to one Blackmagic RAW on it because of the speeds and what it requires. If you can record that on an SD card, I'm pretty sure you can get away with it on a hard drive. But then you can go out and get you a four terabyte hard drive for a hundred bucks, slap it in one of these enclosures, and now you have just days of recording time for dirt cheap. Just ways to get around it. With this, it's about $197, maybe 160 on sale for one terabyte. With this, you can get them for under a hundred dollars. So that allows you to double your record time for half the price. And with this enclosure, because it has a case on it and it slides open and off, you can pull the cartridge out, pop you a new one in, 
keep recording. Please keep in mind that this enclosure and setup will work with the new Ursa Mini G2. However, you gotta find a way to mount it. That's the only thing. And some people will probably go with the Blackmagic version that screws onto the ports on the side, but why give up your SDI ports when you can go right into a USB-C and just plug it up when you need to. Plus this thing is little, it's thin, so you can put it somewhere. So how do you mount this thing to your Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera? Well, there's two ways. In fact, there's one main way, and then there's the way I did it. Special to me, the unique tie way. So the main way is by getting a cell phone mount, right? Don't go get some special because I'm sure a small rig and everybody's going to come out with some special uh, way to do it, some special clamp. Get a cell phone mount that clamps. Clamp it to your hard drive reader, tighten it down, pop it on your cage, and let it hold it up. With that particular reader, it comes with a traditional USB um, cable. However, I purchased a USB-C cable to USB-C cable. I'll put the link to that and the uh, enclosure in the description. What I ended up doing was I ended up getting a little clever with it. I ended up gluing, yeah, I super glued it, to the back of my cheese plate so that I can connect it to my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera in a way where I can slide things in and out. The cable stays connected at all time, or I can remove it to plug in this thing. And it's perfect for my setup because now I have my V-mount power adapter. I can plug this in. And if I need to go run and gun, get on a gimbal or something, I can either record to an SD card or mount this to the top where I can use something like this. So the only time I really use this is when I'm on a gimbal. A majority of time, I'm shooting directly onto solid state drives. And that's just my setup, something that I made. I haven't seen anybody really use it. It's just my setup and it works for me because I got a ton of these laying around and they are dirt cheap. Go on Craigslist and look at how many of these you find for sale. People bought them, thought they needed them, you know, 500 gigs will get you a lot of recording time. I mean, even in ProRes HQ, you still getting, you know, I want to say almost a hundred minutes. So you get a lot more with Blackmagic RAW. And this has the capability of getting you 4K60 continuously without any drop frames. This one that I'm using is a Transcend. It's one of the older ones that was approved for the pocket or production 4K model. This thing is probably three years old. If I can get it on this, I'm sure anything you buy now can possibly get you full quality on this thing. So I love this and that's my way of recording. I haven't really heard nobody on the internet do it. I've seen one or two guys maybe try to record on it. My setup is a little unique and I wanted to share that with you guys. And like I said, if you learn anything from this video or you have a unique way of recording media on the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, post it in the comments. If you like this video, can you please give me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and stay tuned for more videos. All right, guys, I'll see you next video.